Okay, so we're on to chapter 14, which is the introduction. I think it's called partial derivatives is what this chapter is called. And the section 14.1 is just an overview of functions of several variables. And in this video, I'm going to do one problem real quickly that will cover the basics pretty much, uh, which includes domain range and level curves. So let's get to it then. And let's take a look at the problem, which is the following. It's 14.1.30. And uh, you have this function f of x comma y is equal to ln of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. All right, so f of x comma y just means that it has two inputs, an x and a y, and then that's the function right there. Okay, so what do you want to do? Okay, so part A is to find the domain of the function. All right, so what is the domain of the function? It's all values that I can input for x and y. All right, so where so are there any restrictions on the domain well if you think about it what can't ln be well ln of x right means that x has to be greater than zero right so when you have ln of 9 minus x squared minus y then or minus y squared then that means that 9 minus x squared minus y squared has to be greater than zero right because if we look at the ln curve it looks like that right it never gets to zero because it goes to negative infinity so all right so what is this well if we play around a little bit you see that this is really nine minus x squared plus y squared right in a quantity and that's greater than zero and so moving everything else to the right hand side then we see that oh this just means that uh, nine has to be greater than uh, x squared plus y squared So the number nine has to be greater than x squared plus y squared in order for it, in order for us to be, uh, in order for the domain to be valid, which means that our domain is going to be x squared plus y squared is less than nine, right? So as long as x squared plus y squared is less than nine, then we're going to be good. Right. Okay. So what is x squared plus y squared is less than nine? So again, I just flipped. Right. I just swapped the position of these two uh, guys and flipped the signs. So I rewrote it. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. Well, that just means at three and at three uh, on the x y axis, we're going to have an open circle. Right. That looks like this. And x squared plus y squared equals nine uh, less than nine means it can be anything inside this open circle okay so that's part a what's part b uh part b is what's the range of this function all right so part b is the range of the function so it's what uh you know what values can we take on in this function if we look at the function nine minus x squared minus y squared Right, which is the same thing as ln of 9 minus the quantity x squared plus y squared. Notice that x squared plus y squared is always going to be positive, right? Which means the biggest that our function can get is going to be if x squared plus y squared is 0, right? So if x and y are 0, then you got ln 9. So our absolute maximum value is going to be ln 9 when x and y are 0, right? So I hope you got, hopefully you guys see that, why that's the case, right? We, this can't be negative, right? X squared plus Y squared can't be negative. And so you can't have subtracting a neg negative number and then this whole quantity getting bigger. That can never happen. And therefore the largest value it can actually be is ln nine. So the range then is gonna be all values less than nine. And since really F of X, Y equals ln nine, right? Um, a lot of times we write z is equal to f of x, y. So then we can say that z has to be less than ln 9, okay? Or f of x, y has to be ln 9. It's this, it, it means the same thing. All right, so these two mean the same thing. And part c, okay, part c asks us to describe the function's level curves. So what are level curves? Okay, um, level curves are the following. 
we just take random z values and we plot what x and y would look like to give us that z value. So for example, let's say I say that z is equal to ln5. All right. Well, in order for z to be ln5, remember our function is ln9 minus the quantity x squared plus y squared. It's a lot easier to think about it this way. That means x squared plus y squared has to equal 4 right, in order to, for us to get ln5. So if we plot them, right, so uh, let's say here's 1, here's 2, and here's 1, here's 2, this is x, this is y, right, x squared plus y squared plus 4 gets us z equals ln5. So here, the circle of radius 2 that goes to the point, uh, that goes, to, goes through, right, 2, 0, and 0, 2, this is this corresponds to the level curve z equals ln5 right and let's say what's let, what if i say z equals ln8 right well for z equals ln8 right then x squared plus y squared has to equal 1 because it's ln9 minus 1 right so x squared plus y squared equals 1 and then i have this curve here or this circle here which corresponds to then z equals ln8, okay? So when z is ln8, my function has to be, well, my x, y, my choices for x and y have to be on that inner circle, and when z equals ln5, my functions for x and y have to be on this outer circle, right? And so on and so forth. So you can pick any value for z you want and then draw a corresponding circle. So I guess, I mean, we can have like z um, equals ln 1, right? Or in that case, this is really z equals 0, right? ln 1 is 0. And that means x squared plus y squared has to equal 8. So now what do we have? Well, now we have this circle that is root 8 uh, has is its radius. So it's not quite at 3, but, you know, it goes around like this. And then this is our point z equals ln 1 or z equals 0, which is what I'll write. Okay, so those are level curves. And so the level curves then are concentric circles. Um, and what's the maximum radius it can be? Well, it can't be 9, right? Because uh, if x squared plus y squared is equal to 9, well, up here we say that has to be less than 9. So it's all circles, um, the level curves. So that's what we're trying to find here. I forgot to write it. Um, level curves are circles uh, centered at the origin with radius less than or equal to 3, right? Because x squared plus y squared equals 9. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the next part? Part D asks us to find. Uh, the boundary of the domain. Well, it's fairly obvious because if we look up here, we have this dotted dashed line at x squared plus y squared equals 9, right? So the boundary is x squared plus y squared equals 9, but the domain is x squared plus y squared is less than 9 because, right, every x, y point that you can choose is bounded by this dotted line on the outside. So the boundary of domain is x squared plus y squared is equal to 9, um, which is the circle itself, not the disk, the entire, just the circle on the outside, not the disk itself. All right, part E, um, it asks me if the domain is an open region, a closed region, or neither. Okay, so what does an open or a closed region mean? Well, we can see that uh, the boundary is open, essentially, right? So, so uh, because the because the boundary here, it, this disk is an open, like this this boundary uh, around here is open. We have an open region, and that's that's kind of the way to think about it. Uh, there's a there's a better way to. Th Yeah, so, okay, so a region is open if it consists only of interior points 
and a region is closed if it contains its entire boundary, well, this contains none of the boundary, right? Because the boundary is entirely open, and so we have an open region. Okay, and then part F. What does part F ask us? It asks us, uh, da, 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 da. it asks us to decide if the domain is bounded or unbounded. Okay, so what is the domain? Again, the domain's up here. It's x squared plus y squared is less than nine, and well, that's pretty obviously bounded. It's bounded by nine, right? So, um, and in the cert in, in the picture, you can see that clearly um, it's restricted into a finite area region. Okay, um, and if it weren't restricted to a finite area region, uh, then it it would be unbounded. So this is a bounded domain. Okay, cool. So that's it. That's all for 14.1. We covered domain range and level curves. Those are really the the most important things about 14.1. And I don't really think that this will show up on an exam. It usually does not, but eh, who knows? And yeah, we'll move on to 14.2. Talk about limits. It's fun times.